guys welcome back um, today I'm going to chat about um, really it's related to the topic of the cost of living crisis so it's all about money matters um, and how we as a family um, manage manage our money and survive without living working a conventional nine-to-five um, so we've been um, been doing some documentary before where we've been caught on camera talking about um well when it got edited down it came down to matt saying that working a nine to five wasn't in his psyche so it was it was a little bit you know misconstrued that there was a larger conversation around it and basically um what he was trying to say was um him and i have always pretty much been apart from maybe when we were youngsters working in like supermarket waitressing those kind of jobs we've pretty much all been um, always been self-employed um so when we say nine to five isn't in our psyche we say kind of like working um employed by someone else in in one of those sorts of jobs um is is just not who we are we're not we're not out to um to become slaves to the system and make other people lots of money while we walk away with hardly anything <laughs> Um, so when we work, we basically um, we take on meaningful work and work that um, we're passionate about. Um, so I, maybe I'll begin by giving you a little bit of the history behind um, behind our, our work before children. Um, so we were pretty much self-employed, both of us um, doing our own thing. Matt was um, a personal trainer, a fitness instructor. Um, a yoga instructor all into to that industry the health industry um and he worked he did work at nuffield health for a time um, when yuli was little before yuli he used to do private personal training um he worked at virgin active for a while worked on the cruise ships um with regards to me i i was pretty young when i had yuli but i did manage to get some um some work behind me all related really to to the things I'm interested in, natural health and children. Um, so I did a lot of childcare jobs, work. Um, I did trained up as a nutritional advisor and did some food sensitivity testing. Um, that was that was good fun, and that was a like a franchise that I that I worked for for a few years. And then both of us came together actually and decided to take on a children's yoga franchise um, in Hertfordshire. And that we spent a few years building up um, to a level where I had recruited some teachers um, and I was teaching a lot of the the younger kids classes myself. And that's when I found out I got pregnant with Yuli at um, 27 years old. Um, so at that point, um, I was left, well, we were left with a decision. Um, we couldn't really continue. We didn't have enough teachers to take on all the classes we built up um so matt wasn't really it wasn't his thing to teach the younger ones so he couldn't have taken that bit over um so at that point we decided to to hand the franchise back because the the woman that was running the franchise also was getting a bit cheeky wanting to take money from matt's adult yoga classes and um just really weren't feeling it anymore so at that point we had um just booked like a trip to australia to go traveling we'd let go pretty much everything, sold everything up. And then I found out I was pregnant with Yuli. Um, so we still decided to go. We thought we'll give it give it a shot. And Matt had a plan to um, go abroad and do some live streaming yoga. But at the time, um, that really, like there was none of this Zoom and it, it wasn't a built up thing yet, online yoga. Um, so we were a little bit ahead of the game and it would cost a lot of money to do it. And it didn't really work out that way. So. We kind of just went over to Australia and um, and explored and, and and saw what we could find to do out there, um, and we did a lot of kind of health exchange work, sort of um you know voluntary work in exchange for um for accommodation and a bit of money, um, and we had a grand time out there. Uh, but when it came to it, um, they they had some some income coming in, um, some passive income and that stopped so we ended up having to to come back to england 
and so at that point we decided that Hertfordshire wasn't for us and that we would relocate down to Brighton um, and so um, we we kind of went to stay with family that's why we came down here there was um, a local connection um, from Matt's family and then from there we went in to um, some sort of temporary emergency accommodation uh, thinking we'd probably go down the social housing route um, and then I had Yuli in that flat and he was very like sickly baby he was um, like a, having baby asthma attacks really ill like lots of skin rashes wouldn't sleep didn't sleep for at least like the first 18 months of his life um, and so that was like the first sort of spanner in the works when it came to um, building up rebuilding careers I guess after doing some traveling um, and he required some like full-on full-on care anyway so we went swiftly into private renting from there because the the flat was really that we were in was really moldy and we didn't really feel we had the time to wait to get something appropriate so we went back into private renting and there we stayed for about seven years and i also had a star in that in that place it's a lovely little flat with a garden um and at that point the the landlord wanted the property back um to sell it on you know I, I, at the time they told us it was little aggravations with the neighbors like us leaving push chairs in the hallway and stuff but um it culminated that when we left they ended up selling it so um yeah we kind of figured at that point the rents had gone soaring high as they still are and um and we didn't want to um keep sort of fighting the system of trying to pay these ridiculous rents um, so we went into back into the um, council emergency housing um, to for a year to get to this place where we're at now, which is um, a, it's counted as long term temporary accommodation. And, and we're still here. We're still at a market rent of about 80 percent. Um, so the aim is to move on from here to a more sustainable rent um, before we can really build up the careers. Otherwise, like any money that we do build up will just go straight back into rent and we won't be able to build anything um so we've been on the the waiting list for the housing register for about eight and a half years now and still waiting to be offered something that we bid on um yeah it takes takes a long while it's not not the easy route going down for a sustainable council rent um they do they make you wait they make you sweat um but it's part of our our long-term plan to to really be able to start building um because i mean for, for us the ultimate dream is to have a large bit of land a homestead um but you do need you need money to get there and we we're not privileged to have um the inheritances to sit on and everything and any any money coming in from any trust funds um i did at one point have an offer of um some family money and we did go uh, exploring some eco communities both local in England and France uh, but the, the the money that was promised was then it had too many strings attached and it wasn't for the lifestyle that we had chosen it was for a very conventional lifestyle so instead of like sell my soul to the devil and you know for money I, I just turned the money down and said no let's let's just go back to square one and start building again um so yeah we're in this situation then that we're we're certainly using housing benefit to help cover our rent and we've been out in and out of a little bit of job seekers but um as matt had mostly been working for all this time um we we really had decided just not to claim much and just to live off the bare basic um and the the income that he was earning was pretty much um equivalent if not a bit more to the sort of the benefits we would have been able to claim anyway um so we um yeah we um i've lost my train of thought now we built slowly um and we sort of took a a redirection of of change of careers i started getting into to this content creating and um, to blogging and sharing stuff on the media and that created a little in income revenue for me and also just uh, helped me follow my passion um matt retrained as a holistic health coach um in um nutri in the in institute of integrative nutrition um and 
at the same time he also um, we just started living frugally and so we started upcycling things um, he started picking up pallet wood and playing with it and so now we have um, he has a, a little business where he um, creates upcycled furniture and bits and bobs uh, whatever people want really from from um, reclaimed wood and at the side of that he also has a few friends he goes and does a little bit of laboring a bit of working for here and there and um we do we have um people that we know that we do pet sitting for animal boarding and we really just do an eclectic mix of um things that interest us things um that fit into our lifestyle it's got to be things that we can do in and around the children so as you know the children are home educated and um that means there's never not children around so we have to fit our working in and around that lifestyle um, so a lot of the time that the children are either helping us out with what we do or we're doing it around them. I mean, it does help very much that, um, that there's two of us so we can we can navigate around that. Um, but yes, yeah, by no means it's not a luxury lifestyle. Um, we don't have holidays. We don't run a car. Uh, we, we live very frugally. Um, and in order to, to keep, especially Ostara, because she's the socialite in the family, in order to keep her social life busy, we've had to get creative. Um, so she did, she did ballet class for a while. She's just given that up actually. Um, and that I managed to access some funding from, um, which was brilliant. And then she does gymnastics every week, um, which we, we pay for. And we've managed to set up a, a nice free group for her, at our local allotments. Um, and so we run the group um, and we invite people along and. And then we take our children along to the group as well. So they in, in turn get a free group and it's a bit of work for us as well. So it's a really nice sort of symbiotic relationship. And also we found a few other little free groups. Uh, so to pack our stars like social, socialite schedule out for the week. Um, Yuli's a little bit more um, laid back. He doesn't want the groups. He's, as I say, when he was born, he was kind of quite high needs and highly sensitive. Um, and he still is, so uh, he gets a lot of social anxiety, so he doesn't really need much more than one-on-one -on -one play dates um, to, to keep him going. And he does a lot of um, a lot of his learning online, and, and yeah, he does, I mean, we went to Drusilla, so he into the animals, we went to the zoo the other day, and it is, uh, we also went to a, a home ed event where we um, went to look at the reptiles, so yeah, he, he does get an output, but it's not not so often for him and then Kai just really fits in with Ostara's groups right now um I'm sure at times she'll want more of her own um so yeah our, our ultimate plan really is to to become self-sustainable so we do we want this rent that's really affordable so that we can both um you know build careers that will um not only cover the rent but be able to cover this this lifestyle that we want uh, which gives the, the children an enriching experiences. I mean, I think Matt said um, we did we did do this video before, but I managed to lose it in the editing. Um, and Matt was chatting about um, the fact he had dreams of uh, taking his children snowboarding by the time the eldest one re reached five, and that just didn't happen. Um, so the time scale of you know reaching where you want to reach financially is not always how you see it in your head, and and it makes you adaptable and resilient you know when when things don't go to plan um you know living partially a little bit dependent on benefits um you, you can't really understand it until you've been through it but it's um it's not an easy road it's it's not something you choose to stick in you do it normally as a stepping stone um to help you get to where you want to get but the timeline on that is just not not definitive and so many things come in the way um, not only did we have quite a sickly child for our first child, but then in those first sort of um, seven years of Yuli's life, um, Matt started um, manifesting and developing quite severe arthritis, uh, which was quite disabling for him. And that interfered with him working, which would then interfere with the income. Um, and I couldn't go out and, and substitute that work because I was full-time carer to Yuli he was breastfeeding and he would he wouldn't be cared for by anyone else he was very sensitive so um yeah there's always lots of obstacles in the way when you're um 
chasing the um the, the sustainable lifestyle but we, we're finding you know peace with it all and um we found a nice happy medium that works for us uh we do we, we take work as and when it comes you have to learn to trust the universe that it is coming and it does and you have to get creative and and um be accepting of living frugally you know of um hand-me-down clothes and occasionally topping up food with the food banks um it just just don't be afraid to ask for help i think is is my best advice i can give when you're um coming out the system and looking for other ways it's not just just one way and i think in order to survive you know in this cost of living crisis even before so, but especially now you do kind of need two of you on a really high income um to have to have a decent amount of money to live and you, you can't you, you can't be there for your children if you do that uh you're just going to be knackered all the time so for us that that wasn't an option um home edding for us was also not really a lifestyle choice it was a necessity for our eldest who just would not survive in the school system at all and then um you know they the kids always have a choice whether they do want to try out school um it's not really been something that most of them wanted to do at one point the middle child wanted to try out in the midst of covid but um we just started up more groups for her and she just wanted a bit more social like it wasn't ideal time to try school when when all the covid measures were in place so we put her off for a bit and then once she started more groups she didn't want to try again um but yeah so for us it's it's just really um embracing the simple not not worrying about what we're missing out on i mean we've, we try and create a life that we don't want to voc vacation from um so it's not like poor kids they don't go on holidays we we do lots of lovely trips with them and we live in a, a spot right by the sea and the downs of the countryside um they're they're in nature every week um so they they don't really need the escape of a holiday and don't get me wrong a car would be lovely and we will work up to that um that would be nice uh, so there's there is a few things that we want to work towards um, and then ultimately the dream of being on that own bit of land where we can do all the homesteading and in the meantime we are we are running our home ed group at the allotment we are volunteering up at the community allotment we are going to workshops and learning uh, all these skills and we are growing our own food and so we're kind of we're taking bits and pieces of our dreams and practicing them um, whilst maintaining you know because i do believe in in giving kids stability i don't think you need to I, pass them on an inheritance um and you don't need a mortgage it's you know their inheritance is your happiness and the emotional stability you can give them and if you give them that they'll go and they'll go and build their own castle um it's it's more important that they that they have their childhood and that they um they get to build valuable memories with with their parents and their families and then the rest i, I believe will take care of itself i mean you know um my family built what they thought was a, a solid financial foundation for me and it just it didn't work because the um you know that that sense of emotional grounding wasn't there for me so the money may as well have not been there um, and I did very well academically at school. I went and got my degree and everything, but a degree doesn't, it just doesn't guarantee you anything. It's all, it's all how you use it and, and how you are as a person to, to be able to navigate, you know, the stormy seas of life, um, socially and emotionally. Um, so my, my, our actually definite goal is to, um, work on the children's emotional intelligence. Um, of course, when they want to learn to read and write, they come to us and we, we guide them through that too, should they need any assistance. And we, we try and provide as many like meaningful learning experiences as possible um, with what they show an interest in. Um, and yeah, that's, that's I think, how we... Um, really bring it all together and make it work for us um and yeah let us know in the the comments if you have any questions of anything i've not covered and anything i don't know you could ask matt something and i'll 
I'll respond for him. He's um he's busy working building building a giant men in sheds um, workshop up at the community allotment at the moment. Um, so we've got lots of projects on the go, um, which is fun and exciting, and the kids get to come and be involved and learn. Um, so there's yeah, there's always always fun going on for us, and equally, you know, as you all have, there's also challenges and stress. You know, we had the um we have to have to also navigate the fact that the bills are stupidly high and we just deal with it by saying we're going to tell you how much we can afford to pay we're not going to set up direct debits and you to take how much you think you should be taking we'll we'll pay how much we can afford and no you know we're not going to let them in to install prepayment meters um, and i think you have to be strong you know in these hard times and and prioritize um, your money prioritize when people are asking for money um that you have rights you don't you know have to throw all your money away when you can't afford to feed your kids on greedy electricity companies and and whatnot so just yeah learn your rights make sure you you, you know how to um to again surf surf the storm <laughs> surf the sea in the storm um and yeah if, if there's any as i say any other topics i've not covered or anything else you want to know just pop it in the comments and yeah look forward to um hopefully seeing you more if you subscribe because last video got about ooh, 80 odd thousand views and i think we're still only at 500 subscribers so it'd be great if i could turn those views into to subscribers and and that again will help us um build more of our income and our empire to to help spread this message that there is a, there's a different way you don't you don't have to do things conventionally and you don't have to fear what happens if I don't. There, there are other ways and uh, the universe is looking after you. You just trust it. Okay, thank you. See you again. Bye.